It's one of life's great tragedies, particularly during the post-apocalypse, that people rarely say what they mean or do what they intend. This new race with which we must share the earth has brought with them a new set of rules, previously unheard of in society. What before might have been simple faux pas now carry with them dangerous consequences. For tonight's allegory, we will explore the origin of... God damn it! Anyway, tonight we will tell the origin of one of our most prevalent aphorisms, and one man who dared defy convention. Our story begins with two best friends, Charles and Josiah. As was usually the case on Friday evenings, they were passing the time drinking beers and watching Bob Ross. Josiah, a man of great stature and equally intimidating intelligence, was in the throes of a recent breakup and had fallen into the habit of talking incessantly of his ex-girlfriend. Charles, he was fat and stupid. Not as fat as he was stupid, but he was definitely very, very, very stupid. I have just the thing to get you out of this funk, he said. Charles led Josiah to the garage, where he had locked up a freshly turned zombie. This zombie had no signs of decomposition. All ten fingernails were still intact. His cheeks had not yet begun to sink. His teeth were pretty gross, but that could have happened before he died. And his smell was only slightly putrid, like that of a mild camembert. He had found the zombie after hours of scoping out the nearby countryside. His eyes searching fresh corpses, his mind pondering some stupid thought that Charles would probably think, like how milk was made, or where chickens come from. They passed the first part of the evening, innocently enough, doing what any young man would do with a freshly turned zombie. They played dress-up. They played zombie witch. They even played a little zebra. Eventually, however, Charles and Josiah grew bored and retired into the corner of the garage to passively throw popcorn at the young zombie. It was then that Charles had an idea. Have you ever lit a zombie on fire? he asked Josiah. Are you bleeping crazy? he replied, immediately frightened. Charles assured Josiah that a zombie's aversion to fire is simply an old wives tale and resolved to demonstrate how safe they really were. He stood up, sparked his cigarette lighter with his left hand. His left hand. Then began to near the zombie. I'll show you, Charles said. Charles turned quickly, and Josiah was left alone to fight the two zombies. I'm going to squish you like a bug. He did not say because he was despondent and wanted to die. Perhaps it was because of his recent breakup and so soon after watching his best friend turn, but Josiah refused to grab the axe and fight the two zombies that were going to attack him. He backed himself into a corner of the garage and presented his neck as if in offer. Please, just bite me and get it over with, he said. Better to be a zombie than to live consciously in this cruel world. The zombies inched closer, each step toppling Josiah into the precipice. 
the knowledge of this abyss he could no longer avoid. The inevitability of unconsciousness. The zombies were about to bite. And so was the tale of Charles and Josiah. And the beginning of our age-old adage, never, ever, light a fire around zombies. Also, keep the windows of your safe house boarded, and your perishables in a cool, dark place. And brush, still, twice a day, and floss at least once. <laughs>